and it doesn't record again. Nope, nope, it's working. All right. <laughs> Here we are. Hello. You scared me, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is our very first game of Princes of the Apocalypse. And so, so the very first game we are downloading, we are uh, recording. Yeah, yeah, and also the very first game we're recording. Uh, hopefully this will be going up on YouTube soon. This will be interesting. Well, um, i to make a YouTube channel for us. Yeah, I know, right? Anyways. Um, oh my God, we're becoming influencers. <laughs> oh my God, we're internet <laughs> people. Um, yeah. Anyways, so this... This is our first session. It's going to be a little weird because the player or the characters, uh, the players obviously know each other. We've been doing this for years now, <laughs> um, but the characters don't know each other yet. So we're just going to kind of dump them into a town and see what happens. <laughs> you dump them into a town. No, straight like, up. <clears throat> that's that's what we're doing. Um, so um yeah let's get started then i'm gonna go ahead and move you guys over so you should see the map change oh yeah welcome everybody to red larch oh yeah classic town yep honestly i think this might actually be my very first time playing a level one character <laughs> it's gonna now be it's going to be interesting, and it won't last long. Either you'll level up or you'll die. <laughs> either one, it comes very quick. You either you either sink or swim. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, let's see. Red Larch. Uh, so north of... Uh, Red Larch is a town on the Long Road, a few days north of Waterdeep, and a few days south of Tabor and uh, Neverwinter. It's a way stop for it's a popular way stop for caravans coming to or from the cities of the north, with an inn named the Swinging Sword, a tavern called Helm at High Sun, and many other craftspeople who cater to the different types of travelers that come through. Um. It's been an important stop on the on the long road for two centuries now, um, and it's named for a distinctive stand of red larch trees that were cut down when the hamlet was founded. Anyways, nobody cares about that. Instead, holy shit, Rudolph's here! You're just in time. Yeah. We just started. <laughs> 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 I just happened to switch over to Twitch when I saw that message come in. Okay. <laughs> Yep, yeah, no, no, you're not late, we are, because uh, we're actually recording this, and it took a while to get set up. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so for one reason or another, you guys all find yourselves in this um, uh, town. Uh it, this this tr basically travel hub of a town and i guess let's start going down the list uh velik um we'll, we'll start with you first um so let's see here what were you all right so you've you've just been kind of traveling just kind of going from place to place yep just been kind of wandering about the world mm -hmm. and, th and this is the first uh what you would consider like a large town you've seen for a while like most towns that you found are either like a collection of farms or maybe an inn if you're lucky this this is a uh compared to what you've seen recently this is a bustling yeah. metropolis <laughs> what uh, what are you doing? I am. Uh, I imagine that I've just recently arrived in town, maybe even just like within the past few minutes. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to be probably covered in dust from the road. And I'm going to be thirsty. Very, very thirsty. All right. So, Ooh. you'll find me in the tavern getting a meal and a drink. Fair enough. Let's see here. So asking around town, 
um, you're able to uh, the <clears throat> the uh, the townsfolk are able to quickly point you to a location. Uh, uh, if you look on the map, it should be location number three. It's called. Cool. It is a. You um, don't see the numbers. Uh, yep. That's probably GM. Yeah, don't there. see the numbers. I you didn't, don't even, see the I didn't even realize they were selectable. Holy shit, they are selectable yeah, tokens. On the GM layer. Dang. All right. I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna pop all these on because that's dumb. <laughs> uh, uh oh, I just moved them. Well, you don't want spoilers on what might be significant locations. Yeah. In the future. Eh. So just pop on the relevant one. I'll just pop them onto the map layer. There, there's no real spoilers to any of these. Hey, you, so you claim. So you claim. <laughs> now they're covering the buildings and we can't see the buildings. <laughs> <laughs> so been. hard to please. Oh, man. <laughs> so ungrateful for all the work I put in. Look at this yeah. lovely map I made. <laughs> yeah. Lovely, I think you mean lovely map that I bought. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and we appreciate that dearly. <laughs> Is there a way for me to double check that you're you're in player mode, not GM mode? <laughs> All well, right. Take my word for it. Okay, but yes, uh, number three over here, this but building. I the fact that I told you that we don't see the numbers is a evidence <laughs> in my face. Fair enough. Fair enough. If I was in GM mode, I would have seen them. And which which this actually it. makes a lot more sense because I definitely was looking at like some of the maps and I'm like there's like spoiler heavy names all over the place how do I mark these so that they don't see them and you, you have know, to remember that you see more than we yeah do. and I didn't register that most of these are probably hidden <clears throat> um like if I check the surrounding area of the red larch. Oh yeah, those are definitely on the GM layer. All right, so I can, because what I did was I just covered them up with fog of war. Like, nope, you're not gonna see these. <laughs> you but, did extra unnecessary uh, work. Yes, DM. I did. <laughs> I am very clever. <laughs> are you dummy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let's get let's get rolling. Um. Anyways, so you see my ping right here, location number three. Uh, this is, uh, the Helm High Sun. Um, it is a ramshackle two-story tavern. Uh, rusty metal grills cover its small, dirty windows. The tavern's name is printed in large, simple letters on both sides of a jutting wooden sign. Atop the sign is a rusting, oversized ornament, a warrior's bucket helm with two eye slits. On closer inspection, it actually appears to be an upside-down wash tub. Uh, so, uh, you're looking for a drink then. Uh, you head inside. It is a large, dimly, wit, dim, dimly lit, uh, wooden paneled tap room. Uh, there is a staircase to an upper floor, which is just as dim and darkly paneled. And across the back of the tap room is a long bar with three copper candle lanterns hanging over it and stairs leading down into the cellar. Um, there, uh, are several townsfolk hanging around and talking amongst each other. And there's a man behind the bar, uh, you know, do, doing as bartenders do, polishing glasses and handing out drinks. Um... Yeah, no, I'm just going to enjoy my uh, my meal and my uh, beverage. All right. Quietly. <laughs> Quietly and, uh, and ominous, ominously. <laughs> uh, no, not ominously, just anonymously. <laughs> anonymously. Yeah. All right, there we go. Um, so, let's see here. I'm going to step away for a second while we go to the next person. All right. Sure. I was just I was looking to see if there was anything he could learn here. Uh but all right, in that case we'll get to the next person. 
All right, next on our line in the stream, it looks like we've got Barjak. All right, so should I describe my character first before uh, coming in? Sure, if you want to. All right, so I imagine I also start in, like outside of town as I, as I come in, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, so uh, as you see walking down the road, you will, and you will see a... a, a uh, you will see a uh, relatively young uh, half orc uh, with uh, with some metal armor, a shield, and and, and uh, his axe uh, strapped onto his back, and uh, in, along with the backpack, he is uh, walking down the road. He has some uh, muddy boots, and he looks uh, kind of worse for wear at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um. And oh, I... as I and as I am walking towards the street, I'm just gonna sigh, look around, <clears throat> and I am going to start looking for, I guess, some kind of notice board, maybe. And I'm going to ask around for people if they know where I can find some kind of job. Okay. Um. Well, actually, I'll go ahead and let you know this real quick. <clears throat> so. You mentioned you mentioned before in our discussions that um, your uh, family is involved with the Order of the Gauntlet, correct? Hello. Did we lose Vince? Did we I don't hear Vince. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm still here. Uh, yeah, I, I asked you. You said you're. Did you not hear the DM? Yeah, yeah, I said yep. Okay. okay, okay. You must have cut out just for that yep because I was just like, huh? Uh, okay. Well, you're not. You know, you're you're. Hmm. Uh, you you weren't overly involved with the comings and goings of people, but you are. This is a large, a major location. Uh, between you know major cities like Waterdeep at or between Waterdeep and basically everywhere else in the north, so you do know that there is a small shrine here, uh, the All Faith Shrine, uh, run by a man named Imdar, or named Imdar. Uh, he is a priest there and is also a contact for the Order of the Gauntlet. All right, the All Faiths Shrine. The All Faiths Shrine, and there's his name right there. Oh, Faiths. Yes. All right, the All Faith Shrine. Imdar. Yep, Imdar. Rel <coughs> Vonder. Thank you for uh, writing it down because I would have never uh, <laughs> nope. uh, gotten it. No, nope, that's fair. Um, yeah, I just figured but I'd yeah, mention sure. that. Just figured I'd mention that for you in case you needed it. Yeah, sure. As I get here, I'm going to look around and remember that tidbit of information and say, like, well, if someone might have a job uh, that requires my particular set of skills. It might be it might be there, so I'm going to go take a walk over. Okay, okay. So you head for the All Faith Shrine on the west side of the mm -hmm. long road, just south of the inn's stable yard, stands what looks like a grand stone mansion. Two wide wooden doors, painted with the symbols of many gods, stand open day and night. Inside is a plain chapel with a stone altar. Uh, the All Faith Shrine is a, uh, it's used by you know, as the name would suggest many faiths and is owned by none in particular priests that shuttle uh to and from water deep tend to stay uh here for long periods of time watching over the place um as it as you head in you see uh then they always work in pairs uh heading in you see two people are currently working there uh you see a the man you assume to be Imdar, and then you also see. Uh, you also see a woman. Um, 
and they're both <laughs> currently um uh 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 the, the woman tending is to the kind shrine. yeah they're they're just kind of tending to the shrine making sure everything is uh well kept so yeah in that case i just walk in i uh, will look around and i will see both of them and i'll just go like greetings i don't wish to bother and bother you too long uh i imagine <laughs> you are imdar am i correct uh, that is, he, he he turns to look at you and says that is correct and it is no bother all are welcome uh, all are welcome here at the shrine. Thank you very much, but um, I'll cut to the chase. Uh, I am in need of some coin, and I am. I guess I am a member of the Order of the Gauntlet. Would you have any jobs for? A monster slayer or a monster hunter? Uh, he kind of, <laughs> he kind of raises his eyebrow at like, uh, I, I suppose I'm technically sort of order of the gauntlet. <laughs> like, like, okay, um, but yeah, no, he um, let's see here, what does he know? Um. Yeah, no, he, he kind of nods and uh, strokes his chin a little bit and says, Monster hunting. Well, you are in luck. Monsters seem to have been, or according to the, the villagers, uh, monsters seem to have been popping up more often lately. Um, there's even been mention of a... Let's see here. Uh, I've heard some of the town or some of the folk around here uh, talking something about a ghost. Um, a, a ghost in the. Uh, let me see if I can. There's just so many notes to go over. Uh, sure is. Uh, some 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 of the. Uh, some of the children here have been talking about seeing a ghost. If that sounds up in the nearby hillside, if that seems like something you could handle. Well, like I said, I am in need. I am in dire need of coin. Do you know if the job pays at all, or um, am I just doing this for out of the goodness of my heart and for? <laughs> glory and honor <laughs> nothing wrong with a little glory but i'm sure uh if the people aren't willing or i'm sure there might be some uh uh from what i've heard that it seems to be guarding some type of tomb so there might be treasure there if that's what you're looking for perfect second question mm -hmm. do you know where the tavern is, <laughs> I, I might I might need some some friends on this particular job. Uh, you can never be too careful. I know where the tavern is. <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> um, well, all right. In that case, he kind of walks outside and begins pointing down the road. And he points to. Um, if you want more interest. Or information about the two, or about this ghost. Um, try talking to. Let's see, location number eight. <laughs> there we go. Prep um, DM. He is prep. Oh, I have I have notes. I have notes galore. It's finding things in these notes, and also That's prep comes into play is arranging your notes where you know where the information you want. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm able to find, like, oh, I need information from Area 8, but, like, I'm not going to copy the whole dang book because that has, like, key NPCs, description about the building, uh, what they know about this, what they know about that. Like. <laughs> Trust me. I know <laughs> what they're like. 
Yeah. No. Um, anyways, uh, if you want more information about the two, about the uh, this supposed haunting, uh, you're gonna want to go talk to Lauren. <clears throat> uh, and he points down the road to um, a. Uh, uh, it's the uh, he works the uh, bakery down over there. Um, and if you want. Uh, to get something to drink, um, that would be that would be over at the Helm High Sun. And he points towards the uh, the tavern that we talked about previously. <laughs> well, in that case, like I said, I'll go to the tavern, look right. for maybe some associates that might be helping me uh, hunt down, hunting down a ghost. Because if it is indeed a ghost, I'm going to need some help. <laughs> What, you don't think you can take down a ghost on your own? <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Witcher? That's not what I said. <laughs> I'm just saying. All right. But anyway, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I do. Next up. Uh, class races. Um, well, we'll be getting to uh, classes soon enough, hopefully. But uh, so far, we've had a human and a half-orc. Um... Next up, we have uh, so so. Which would you prefer prefer, by the way? Because I didn't get to. Uh, yeah, no, like. Uh, call me Amos for now. Amos, okay. I was just wondering because I have. Uh, yeah, it's a, a, confusing. Aramea as on your uh, character on Discord <clears throat> or not Discord on. Uh, oh, that's Twitch. fine. But, spoilers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, spoilers. Um. You don't know what's just what. It I ain't have, spoilers. I have already read all of your backstory. I know everything about you all. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? All right. I couldn't resist. I was so curious. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry. He doesn't know about your plot hooks because those were in Discord. Uh, right. But, all right. All I, did, all, I did, all I just did was read the little like bio blurb that as soon as you open the character sheet. Yep. But I didn't look at your character sheets. I just the little bio blurbs that you guys put there on the <laughs> page. <laughs> Spoilers. All right, Amos. I'm curious. All Amos, right. that's a Amos. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, Amos is a purple tea fling, and to give a bit of a description, Amos is wearing like fine silk and everything, and they're also kind of like a hue of dark blue and like like violet kind of. Kind of meshing together, He's a very and then fancy boy. <laughs> yeah, almost also wears like one kind of like um, set of earrings where one is kind of like a string kind of of jewelry on one side, and then the other one is kind of like more decorative on the other, and kind of like loops back like to the top. And then um, almost also has like black hair, kind of braided, and like within the braids, there's like you will see like little slivers of gold inlays in the hair. And Amos is currently within the tavern. Ah, he's already there. Um, he's, he was already there, and he's been kind of in the corner giving people uh, card readings. All right. And keeping an eye out for uh, any strangers. Okay. I feel like my uh, intro was pretty lackluster compared to everybody else's so far. <laughs> you just you just said I'm dusty. I'm getting a drink. <laughs> 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 Which, to be fair, from what little I know of your character, seems appropriate. <laughs> All, All right. right. For now. All right. Yep. Yeah, but that's pretty much it. All right, Amos. So uh, yeah, Amos probably saw me walk in. And oh Amos yeah. Uh, so Amos, you've, uh, would you say you've just arrived or you've been in town for like a day or two now? Yeah. I'll say I've been here for a day or two. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, you've been here for a while and, uh, you've made a, a bit of coin dealing in, uh, your fortune telling business and the people around town seem to enjoy you enough. Like you, you're, you're an interest, you're an interesting bit of fun. Um, let's see. I flirt with 
people here and there, especially oh, uh, of the female gender. Oh, of course. I'm sure they <laughs> I'm sure they're enjoying that too. Well, you're a bard. That kind of goes without saying. <laughs> Uh, all right. So, um, you're, uh, doing a reading for someone. Let's see here. What have you been... I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out what to say, uh, with your <coughs> plot hook. I guess you know why you're here in town. What have you been doing about that? I've been kind of trying to keep up with any gossip of interest um anything strange happening any death that happened nearby any gossip okay okay um i charm my way through to listen to these yeah let me see what kind of information would you have gotten so far um <clears throat> Definitely wouldn't have talked with these people yet. Um, sure. So, you have been... Um, plenty of people come and go through the bar. It's a pretty popular location in town. Um, <clears throat> and you would have heard from... Uh, apologies. There, there's a couple of different things I could give you. Uh, let's see. No, he's from the st. No, you wouldn't have heard from him. Um, yeah, sure. Let's go for that. Um, and you have been, uh, specifically looking out for something, and you managed to, um. You know, talking with the people in town. Uh, you you've spoken. You've been staying in the uh, at the Swinging Sword Inn quite often, or during your time here. It's so. There's two taverns. Nope. There is a tavern which just serves food and drink, and then there's the inn. Oh, and the inn. Oh, okay. okay which, okay. unfortunately, for the inn, their kitchen burned down recently. So. Um, <laughs> The most of the most of the people go to uh, the, yeah, the okay. swinging sword is the inn, but most people will go f for uh, for food and drink. They they will head to um, uh, the hell high sun for that. But anyways, uh, the the owner of the. Um, <clears throat> Uh, a lot of people around town have been complaining about troubles in this town. Um, monsters seeming more prevalent. Um, you've heard word of, like, uh, raiders. Uh, or m more bandit activity in the area uh, surrounding Red Larch. And something that caught your attention is the owner of the Swinging Sword, a woman by, by the name of Kylesa. Um, she thinks that the, um, the source of all of this, uh, fell magic in town, all this evil influence, is probably coming from a place called Lance Rock. Okay. Um, cool. So Lance that, that, Rock. that is, that is your little tidbit. And um, you, you see uh, Velik walk in. You, you've gotten pretty used to recognizing the locals and also uh, what uh, rich, rich smucks coming in on their caravans that you can con some money out of. Right. Um, so this human <laughs> that you see walk in is definitely not yes. rich. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no. He, he... Whether or not he's a Smuck remains to be seen. <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, I guess I could give a little description of him. Sure, go ahead. You didn't really uh, do that earlier. Yeah. So, like a physical description. He's um, <clears throat> he's a fairly tall. Um. 
pretty pretty uh, medium build. He's got uh, brown hair, uh, short hair with a short beard, and uh, he's wearing pretty simple clothes, like you know, just uh, basic like wool trousers, uh, like a wool or a linen tunic, you know, and pretty uh, not terribly bright colors. So like maybe like a brownish red tunic and like maybe a dark green cloak that looks like pretty rough spun wool. Okay. So very much the opposite kind of clothing of what Amos is wearing. Yeah, no, yeah. Not, nothing like Amos. <laughs> not fancy. And, and pretty much everything that screams, it always screams just a basic dude traveling on the road. So, someone who's been walking for too long. But he also kind of carries himself like, you know, you don't want to mess with him because <laughs> he obviously he's still walking the road. So. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. Not a pushover. All right. Uh, in that case, we got our last character here, Tedmund. <laughs> I love. Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I love that name, <laughs> Tedmund. <laughs> you sure you didn't accidentally put a D where there was supposed to be an O, and it's Teomund? <laughs> no. No, that that would that would be too elvish. <laughs> this is Tedmund. Yep. He's, <laughs> he's only half yeah. elf. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Now, um, and even from a bystander point of view. If you saw him, he'd probably just look like a normal human, unless you know what you're looking for. Um, so yeah, as you can see on the token, um, he has brown hair and brown beard. Um, his ears are um, hidden under his hair. Um, and um, he's wearing a chainmail armor. And full of, um, well, I'm guessing he's still full of ash oh. <laughs> on the clothing and um, armor. Yeah, yeah, uh, not not a lot of it, but he definitely seems to be like part of him. Just seems to be like smeared with ash. Yeah, yeah. Like like he just rolled around in a fire pit too long. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so Tedmund, you have arrived in Red Larch. What's the plan here, buddy? Well, first of all, almost as if by habit, he's going to walk around and look around to to see if there's any um anything bad going on. Um not too hard, but just keeping an eye out. Um just, just a little suspicious there. Yeah, yeah. All right. And um he's going to want um something to drink after what he's been through <laughs> and um Gonna be looking for a tavern. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you walk into town and you give it the one. So all met in a tavern. <laughs> yep, you all meet in a tavern. Um, of course. Of course. This is um, a classic D and D campaign. We have to have a classic start. <laughs> D campaign start. I love. I love how I didn't even make you guys do that. You just all decided we're going to a tavern. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Okay, but yeah, you give the town the once over, and you see a bunch of different places. There's like uh, several different shops. This this place seems to mostly cater to um, traveling merchants. There's a couple of quarries. There's a large open area where people can set up stalls. There's um, you see uh, a it's like you see like a bakery, a clothing shop, uh, an inn. Uh, what appears to be a um, I don't I don't remember the right word, but like sheriff, I guess. <laughs> uh, a, yeah, like a sheriff's office, basically. Um, uh, you also uh, you you make note of this for later, but you do see a very nice looking bathhouse. Oh, good. Uh, but before good. but before you get to that, you you have decided. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you have had a rough couple of days, and alcohol is required. <laughs> yeah, we've exactly. all had a rough couple of days, I think. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, it, <laughs> almost, I'm, almost not really. A couple of days. But the rest, the rest of you have been, had a very interesting last couple of days. Um. <clears throat> so yeah, you uh, 
ask around a little bit and uh, like the others find yourself pointed towards the helmet high sun um, uh, heading in you kind of uh, bump ways with a uh, with a half orc and you kind of like oh no I'm oh, sorry after nope. you uh, and just kind of like both back away from the door and try to usher the other in and then like oh wait no I just and and it's it's all confusing but eventually you, you both find your way through the door <laughs> <laughs> but just imagine it happening because it would it would 100% happen to me and Dan <laughs> I, would, yeah. uh, I would like to point out that I have been traveling long enough and gone through enough towns that I did not need directions to the tavern. <laughs> you just, you were like magnetically attracted to it. You just like spot right out. <laughs> oh yeah, tavern's right over there. Thanks. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I said that you asked some people, but all right. <laughs> nope, nope, I just said I came into town and went straight to the tavern. <laughs> all right. That's exactly what I did. I didn't have to ask anybody. All right, so you all are uh, just hanging out in the tavern. It is um, it's approaching midday at this point, so uh, a lunch rush is starting to show. So I do see all three of them, right? Because oh yeah, is... no, you 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 definitely tag all of them. Like these people are weird, <laughs> sitting at different tables. Yeah. yeah. Some, something's okay. going on here. <laughs> yeah. So then, um, who's already seated, or all of them sitting separately? I'd say. I'll just... say right now, um, I'm already seated. Yeah. I probably, since I don't have the three of us, I was probably the first one to show up. Yeah, you I'm were. already drinking and eating. Yeah. At this point, I'd so say like. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much that. They're they're all like. Okay. They're all like working their way into seats at this point. I see the half fork, and I like grab my cards, and like give my client that's already there kind of like a kiss on the cheek, and then head over to that half fork. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So I'll say. I mean, it's pr a, a, a purple tiefling making your way over you is pretty noticeable, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And oh, I yeah. think I've noticed that she's that he is some kind of entertainer. Yeah, no, he he sticks out like a very very sore thumb in this town. <laughs> right. Well, I'll say that I've noticed that he that he is some kind of entertainer. So as he makes his way over, I'll just look at him and say. I'm sorry, friend, but uh, if you're looking for uh, for some kind of client, I am not that one. I I don't have an, I don't even have money to buy myself a meal. Oh no, no, it's fine. I'll I'll buy you your meal. What brought you over to town? And they just kind of like pay the. I just like tell them to like choose what order to make, and then I'll put down some coin. I guess I'm going to take, like, some stew and bread or something, but I'm going to be very suspicious about it. Uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, the owner, uh, let's see here, who you, who you name is, or who, who you know the name of is Gar, or Gar, Garland. <laughs> Garlic? Uh, Garland. Garland. Yeah. Uh, he, Garland. He, you see his eyes light up just a little bit at the coins and says, all right, coming right up. <laughs> Cool, cool. How much is it? <laughs> uh, we'll just say like, we'll just say like three copper. <laughs> okay. Yeah, man, you don't even have three copper. You're hella broke. <laughs> yeah, I sure am, buddy. Yeah, I'll mark down uh, copper. I said he was. I said he was broke just as like a Witcher reference because his whole character is just a Witcher reference, and then he took that seriously <laughs> and was just like, "Nope, I have no coin now." I'm like, "All well, right, I geez. used I used the ten coins and uh, gold pieces I had to buy myself a shield." Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. You said it was three copper pieces. Yeah, we'll just say it's three copper pieces. Oh, cool. Got it. <laughs> Dude, she just bought you a squalid meal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was just pulling that number out of my ass. You want a modest? Pay three silver pieces. 
Three silver. <laughs> Dang. One. All right. Yeah. Whatever. It, it was his choice. I gave him the choice. He <laughs> yeah. chose that meal. He's being nice and choosing the cheapest meal. Yeah, there we go. That, there's the explanation. There we go. Mr. 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 So professional DM who can just look up the rules like that. <laughs> hey, uh, I think Barjok will just like look at and look him over and just ask like, Why I keep the oh. book handy? <laughs> Just say, I like, don't have well, a physical book. <laughs> while I, I certainly appreciate it, can I ask why the generosity? I mean, you look like the adventuring type, and I could do with a little fun. <laughs> <laughs> Flirting with him. <laughs> Just making sure your character's a guy, right? Yep. As far as you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Yes, it is. It almost is a male tiefling. Uh -huh. Why would right. you say something like that, DM? <laughs> no. So, Bad at DM. that point, Why? at that point, Bar Barjok will just scoff a little bit, and he'll just, <laughs> well, I don't know what to answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're an orc, and he's a tiefling, so everybody hates you. So you guys got to stick together. <laughs> shut up. You shut up, pink skin. <laughs> yeah. Character speaking. You'll know when my character speaks. All right. Oh, no. no. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's doing no. it. Yes, I am. I'm going to do it. All right. So I guess, so I guess I'm just going to eat my meal. And if the tiefling has any questions, I'll answer them i guess so you going on an adventure or something you probably need coin i sure do the for the job i uh, i took um on my way here uh didn't end so well let me kind of oh. broke you got a job for what not anymore oh the employees kind of and I got killed. Sorry, the employers kind of got killed on the way here. Mm, unfortunate. Well, if you have something fun to do, let me know. And I walk over, like, to the same. So, so mysterious. Everyone's just like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make something happen. No, and I appreciate it, but I just, the, the vague wording, just like, everyone's just like, what's going on? <laughs> I make my way over to Valak. Like, I can't help myself. I'm real curious. <laughs> um, yeah, I kind of come over and then sit down in front of Valak if there's a seat available across from him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is. Yeah, so and like. So Valak will look up from his meal at you and kind of raise an eyebrow, like, yes. But he doesn't say anything. Then, like, you don't look like you're around from here what what brought you along here it comes here it comes <laughs> I am ready a... yourself oh no <laughs> <laughs> see everybody's too busy laughing that nobody can hear me talk <laughs> sorry sorry <laughs> so yeah, this is, this, is, this is true. I am not from you. So could you tell? Well, now I can <laughs> tell from your voice, but uh, you don't look like the sort just be around in one place. And I kind of look at the dust that's still kind of all over his hair and clothing. Oh, yes. Many days on the road. Hmm. Know anything fun to do around here? I've been stuck here for days. Not yet. Only just arrived. Hmm. Willing to find something fun to do? Uh, always looking for something fun to do. Hmm. Looks like that guy, and they point to uh, Barjok. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they say he might have something fun to do, but he won't be. He won't tell me. Eh. He is orc. 
They are selfish. <laughs> wow! I raise my eyebrow at him, and I like give him like a little smirk. <laughs> you are, you are different. Also, not very good. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and how would you know that? Have you met a lot of tieflings? Not really. Ah, uh, so but it's... You hear stories. Everybody has stories. You mean prejudice. Oh my god. They mean stories. <laughs> oh man, this is great. <laughs> Such and then just look story. at him, and I'm like, let me break that story, and I buy him a drink. <laughs> yeah, forget my awkward ass. That <laughs> Damn. Oh, man, we're, oh. Ne we're never going to get a party going. Like, instantly they oh. all hate each other. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. So, so, I almost buy this valley a drink. So I was like, uh, of course, I have open mind. I'm willing to uh, be persuaded. <laughs> I have open brain. <laughs> right. I buy people their meals and their drinks, and no one wants to be part of a party. <laughs> well, you've just been saying, like, hey, you want to do something fun. Like, you, you got to go up and be like, hey, you want to go kill a ghost? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I don't know there's a ghost. All right, you don't know there's a ghost. <laughs> That's why I went to Bardock so he yeah, could I, tell me. Bar he went to the tavern to look for people to help him fight a ghost, and someone just walks right up to him like, hey, got anything fun to do? Doesn't tell them about ghosts. <laughs> Look. All right. All Look, right. So in his defense, in in his defense, a twink walked up and asked if he wanted to do something fun. Like, <laughs> yeah, first of all, that, and second of all, Vincent is very awkward, and Jock is very awkward too. <laughs> Look. So, My so, character is so, not so, awkward, so. but I am awkward, so that's no excuse. <laughs> well, he gets his, his, his new drink. He uh, he raises it in a toast to Amos. He says, if I uh, find anything fun to do, I will tell you. I hope you will do the same for me. Yeah, and they, like, nod, and they, like, look towards the orc again, and I'm like, Want to persuade him to tell us what's fun around here? Also, Do I notice them looking my way? Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Velik's not very quiet, and uh, of course, uh, almost. I'm definitely is, not being quiet is, about it. I'm is, making um, it very obvious. Is <laughs> is very obvious in general. <laughs> I mean, so, how many things are there around? Honestly? Not many. This town is like primarily human, which kind of surprised me. Like there, I don't think I saw anyone that wasn't human in the list of NPCs. Actually, no. There's like one gnome that you see <laughs> in the tavern. <laughs> uh, I, oh no, I it's a halfling. It's it. a halfling, not an. Or he's a halfling, uh, not a gnome. My bad. Oh, by yeah. the way, uh, this, what, what, um, how well does almost know the world? Like, fair or like, how well, like, traveled or educated or, or whatnot. Almost is pretty well knowledgeable. So, I think it would be safe, probably safe to say that you would recognize Velik's accent as that he's from Damara. Okay. He's he's from like. Way to way, the east. Way, way east. east. Northeast. Yes, east. Yes, but way east. More east than north, because we're already pretty far north here, I think. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. he's he's pretty much like you know how there's like that five E map of the Sword Coast. <clears throat> he's kind of off the Sword Coast. I'm way off the Sword Coast. Well, yeah, way. he's in the other Forgotten Realms. Yeah, he's he's from like, the rest know, of the Forgotten Realms. The that actual 5... Forgotten Realms. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the the realms that Five E forgot. So think of sword, yeah. think of the Sword Coast like America. Tamara is Russia. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I was looking at that kind of realm for my character before I decided not to. But yeah. yeah, no, you you're just from Waterdeep, which makes sense. Like you're this place is like, you know, like like I said, like a week's travel from Waterdeep, so it makes sense that you would be here. All of that to say that I noticed them 
uh, looking at me. Oh yeah, they they seem to like, like mention you and then look at you and then they're talking and then they look at you again. I'm just, yeah. I'm yeah. Just and then if I see him me. looking at us, I make like a come hither motion with my fingers. Almost <laughs> <laughs> looking at you. Like I glance at you a couple of times and then I'm done. It's like eh, whatever. <laughs> at this point, I think Barjok will just go like, "Fine, I have a ghost-hunting <laughs> job." So it is something fun. No, it's not. Uh, really? Have you ever hunted a ghost? <laughs> Why are you afraid of a ghost? I guess I'll. I guess I'll get. I'll get up. And then I'll just like stomp over and then sit at their table and just go like, all right, look, here's the thing about ghost hunting, right? You can't kill them normally, right? With a wolf, a bear, those things, at least you can use and you can use like a sword, some, you know, some bows and arrows to kill them. Not those guys. Those guys, you need some uh, something more special, right? You need some holy water, some magic weapons, maybe some silver, or otherwise you're gonna have a hard time, right? So he, say so. he says, yelling at two magic some, users. <laughs> unless you guys are some kind of priest or or arcane casters, you can't really help me. Well, um, would you look at that? DM, DM, DM. Is there a candle on the table? Um, <laughs> I would say yes. Is it lit? Not currently. Not currently. Well, hold on a second. I don't think. Well, that's while he looks at that, I automatically cast thaumaturgy to make my eyes glow, <laughs> like the yes. bright, like violet color. Yes! I love Thaumaturgy. It's like my favorite spell. <laughs> and then I glance at Tedment, who's like somewhere in the tavern as well. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the, the one that no one's talked to yet. The, the yeah, obviously, a, the obviously <laughs> a fighter that looks like he got out of a forest fire. <laughs> I look at Tedman and they like also do the come hither motion to him. <laughs> I, uh, alright, so I'll say that I, you know, like Pull out like a match or whatever, and uh, I'll start the candle. I'll light the candle, but then I'll uh, I'll use that. Ooh. And let's say that I'll make uh, I'll make the shape of a ghost appear in the flame. All right. And kind of fly around. <laughs> At that point, uh, I think uh, Barjok will just lean back and just like. All right, you made your point. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> also, I'm All still right. making that come hither motion to Tedman <laughs> while my eyes are still like bright violet. Well, I was thinking Tedman is um, like at the bar eating a meal and drinking an ale, hunched over, just thinking about the past day's events. <laughs> and then <clears throat> fire starts flying around the room. <laughs> I'm not um, making it fly around the room. It's just, like, right by the candle. Okay, fair enough. But, yeah, something seems to be going on at the other table. And there's a very creepy-looking tiefling just, like, just going, come here, you. Yeah, <laughs> so, um... Probably a little more foppish-looking than creepy-looking. Oh, right. <laughs> well, right now, his eyes are glowing. I'd say creepy is slightly appropriate. So, uh, um... People probably expect that from tieflings, though. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I I don't know how many tieflings I've seen though. Uh, probably well, not a lot. Yeah. Well, it's the sword coves. They're kind of common, aren't they? I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, I mean, uh, uh, curiosity will get the best of me. So uh, I'll walk over to the table. And as um, Tedmund approaches, I'm like, "Hey, newcomer, want to go take a ghost on?" That's a uh, spontaneous, um, random. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm bored. <laughs> we gotta get the party together, man. Come on. Sure, sure. <laughs> I'll, I'll go ahead. Uh... All right. Like I, I tried right, uh, to work this... with Sybil here as best I could, and not like, push her away. Like, 
convinced it, okay? <laughs> no, no, y'all did good. I, I well, think I this is... You know what? Cause, look. <laughs> no, par getting right. the party together is anyway. always the most difficult part. Like, I, I think you guys did very well. Difficult and <laughs> awkward. Mm -hmm. um, for right, so, also for taking for taking the initiative of getting all of this together, Amos taken inspiration. Yes. <laughs> By the way, yeah. what does this drop pay? Well, that's the thing. There's no reward on it yet, but oh. apparently the ghost is guarding some kind of tomb, some kind of burial site. Ah, so treasure. Yeah, we're gonna have to do some what? grave digging. Finders first, yes. Sure, but it's also okay. illegal, so we'll have to you know, we'll have to do it fast before we get caught by uh, <laughs> whatever authority is is. Uh, I mean, is, you uh, were you were told this by a priest. I really doubt that this is like. <laughs> I don't think he would tell you to go do something illegal. <laughs> All right, uh, Vince. I think your camera froze. Ah. God damn it! Dang it, Vince! <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Camera okay. shot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you know there's a that tomb out fun. there in the hills. You know it's got the chill. The kids have been saying there's a ghost in it. And you were told that the bake that the guy who owns the bakery down the street might know more. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna tell him. I'm basically gonna say like, well, apparently there's some, uh, there might be some loot in the tomb. And uh, the and the baker might know why I might know more about it. I go find out what's over there. I mean, it's not night time yet, and I'm bored as hell. So yeah, no, like like I said, it's just it's like maybe just like starting to become noon at this point. Sure, let's go and, and let's go ask the and let's go ask the baker. All right. Sure. So, um, I feel like before we get up, we'll, uh, just drain the last of this drink. Yes, let's go! <laughs> <laughs> Take your time. We're not in a hurry. I guess I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna scarf down the rest of my meal and then I'm gonna go too. Oh my gosh. I I'm sorry, this is off topic, but, like, just the slamming beer reminded me. The last time I played with someone this is like one of my first rpgs i did someone did a character with a russian voice like that and <laughs> bear in mind this is when i was working in a boy scout summer camp it was like dead quiet at night and we were hanging out at like a picnic t bench playing this game and this one character like we're doing this exact same thing we're in a bar trying to set the party together and he just yells i want to be her first and slams his fist on the table <laughs> at which point we all freeze as it just echoes <laughs> And all of us look over where across the lake the other the Boy Scouts are currently having their big campfire thing where everyone's doing skits and songs and stuff and we're just like, Oh shit <laughs> We were we were expecting someone to come running out and yell at us, but thankfully no one did. But that just that just reminds me of that. Yeah, no, exactly. So I was I just was reminded reminded of that. That was with the beer first <laughs> slam. All right. Okay, so you all finish up your respective meals and head outside um, off towards the bakery. The most awkward start ever. Yeah, Ooh, no, yeah. Oh, 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 I'm not. sure it could be more awkward. There, um, probably more. Yeah. Well, it almost turned into disaster because <laughs> I was so ready to give up. Slightly forced. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah, but you know what? It worked. And it's and it's a and it's a little more believable than last time I tried to run this campaign, and it was just like, y'all run into each other in the street. Y'all look strong. Do you want to fight a ghost? <laughs> and everyone's like, yeah. <laughs> so this was at least you know, a little bit more believable. For the future, DM. Yes. The easiest way is to tell everyone you all meet before the game starts. Yeah, but also I had to have you guys like in different locations gathering information, so. Uh. Anyway, there, where is the baker? Yeah, because there, there's like different locations around town, and each person knows a different thing. 
and some things are for now, some things are for later. But all right, you head down to the um, uh, down to the bakery, and you can smell it before you see it. Uh, Which one's the bakery? Location uh, number eight. Location eight. Yes. Um, okay. Yep. This aromatic tiny or tidy buildings, ovens, and mixing bowls are in use day and night. The bakery has a hanging sign consisting of a carved and painted wooden round loaf the size of a small cart. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, the bakery always has fresh loaves, fresh round loaves and buns for sale. Its specialty is cheese-topped buns with melted mushroom cheese from the local farms. Um, that actually sounds really good. I know, right? <laughs> it, it does sound really good. I know. Um, it sounds really good, and I'm broke. I can't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Do uh, I see this half fork drooling over this bread? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Um, anyways, uh, uh, you having been here for a while know that uh, this place is uh, owned by a man. Uh, Oh jeez, how do you pronounce that? Mango bar, ma mango barrel. Right, <laughs> mango bar. Mango barrel, <laughs> Lorian. I'm just, right. I'm just gonna mango call bar. him Lorian because the bakery. Mango barrel. Mango oh. barrel. Lauren. <laughs> Lauren, yeah, not Lorian. Jeez, I am. I'm gonna call him Mango Barrel. <laughs> mango <laughs> Barrel, yeah, Lauren. <laughs> um. Uh. He he's you've talked with him quite a few times. He thrive he th seems to thrive on gossip and uh, far fetched tales. Um, you doubt many of them are true, but between the two of you, you can come up with plenty of good stories to tell the townsfolk. Mm -hmm. As we come up, I'm like, darling, how are you? <laughs> um. <laughs> He sees you walk into his store, and he gets a wide smile on his face and says, Ah, ha, ha, Amos, good to see you. Uh, and I'm like, how, how can I, I give him, like, a look, and I'm like, Amos, but it's you, so it's okay. <laughs> oh, sorry, did I say Amos again? Yeah. yeah. Ah, 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 I need to remember that. I even have it written down, but I don't. Ah, uh, just add more H's. Ah, Amos. <laughs> Amos, my apologies. <laughs> the DM is stupid. <laughs> um, it says, uh, how can I help you all? First of all, I'll take four of those breads with the cheese and the mushroom that you make. Ah, uh, <laughs> um. An, a man of excellent taste, I see, and he begins pulling out some loaves and setting them on the counter. And then, and then I'm like, "So we heard that you know a little bit of a ghost story. Here to tell us." A ghost story? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know about a ghost. Um. And I, he, how much do I pay him? We'll say like ten silver for the set. I don't know. Okay. Um, he he kind of nods and says, "All right, ghosts. Yeah, ghosts. I know about ghosts. Is it the no, no? The oh, I bet I know which one you're talking about. <laughs> Had to think about which ghost you're talking about there for a second, but yeah, yeah, no. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, uh, the Mandavir." children uh the mandavir kids uh say they found a haunted tomb um uh, i went to take a quick look for myself uh, i didn't see any ghost there but i did happen to spot a goblin nearby um so probably they're just you know there there's some goblins or whatever there set up making everyone think it's haunted to scare off people. Oh, there that's is. good news. Goblins are easier than uh, ghosts. Good news, everyone. Uh, oh, you guys going to go take care of that? Awesome. Um, yeah. Um, you know where exactly it is? Oh, of course. 
Uh, but in return, you got to tell me all about it when you get back. Of course. And uh, you, uh, he, he um, I assume you have like a map on you or something. Uh, uh, sure. And he, he kind of like marks down a location on the map and says, yeah, it'll be over here. Um, and actually, I can go ahead and show you guys on the actual map. If my cursor would stop disappearing, that's not good. There we go. <laughs> uh, let's see. We want the map of Red Larch surrounding area. So this is this is the area around Red Larch, and he points out this right here. The, tomb. Um, the haunted tomb. <clears throat> Interesting. So yeah, about seven cool. mile hike out of town. You're telling me that some kids went all the way over there. Yeah. I mean, when there's nothing else to do, yeah. I mean, they used to go out in, like, the area to, like, you know, forage for, like, you know, just whatever they could find, like, berries and shit. But um, not, not so much recently. Uh, monsters and bandits and other weirdos. Just strange stuff has been going on lately. They don't go out as much, especially especially not after this ghost scare. <laughs> okay, so how far away is the Lance Rock from that tomb? Just this oh, is you me know asking Lance the DM. Lance, this is me asking the DM. Lance so. Rock is actually over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's wrong? Uh, well, Lance Rock is the uh, plot bit that Amos got a hold of. Uh, okay. Um, if I can find the right. Um, <clears throat> uh, he heard of uh, Kylesa, the owner of the Swinging Sword Inn. It believes that all of the I evil influence on this town is emanating from Lance Rock. Um, and she says, uh, uh, and she's look looking for uh, some adventuring types to go out there and figure out what's going on. Yeah, I just didn't tell you guys yet. I'm... Yep. One problem at a time. Yep. Ghost first. <laughs> Some goblins like seem to be easier to deal compass. with. That is so weird. Sorry, what's up? Look at the compass. Yeah, it's... Yeah. yeah. Hmm. North, is, north is right. <clears throat> it's pretty disconcerting. Yeah, that's kind of weird. I didn't even register that. Anyway. Hello. Uh, oh, shoot. We got a new person in chat. Hello, Keegan. Uh, this is actually our very first session of Princes of the Apocalypse. We just got the party together, and now they're go off to go fight a ghost. Pretty slow start. Yeah, kind of a slow start. Uh, it took it took us a while to get everything set set up and going. And I, okay, so I say goodbye to uh, Engelbarl, <laughs> <laughs> and that's. Stupid name. <laughs> if you imagine FB Trinket from Hunger Games talking, that's kind of how I talk to uh, Ankle Barrel. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. I. Let's do him. I. I. I get it. I'm get. I. I'm get. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yes. And then I say goodbye, and they like depart from the building. Yeah. We can go. All right. So you guys are headed to the haunted tomb. I assume if that's good with everyone, that's what my plan was. But... To head to the haunted tomb? Mm hmm. Yep. I'm going ghost busting. I'm ready to uh, destroy some kind of ancient evil of the spire. 
Or, you know, a goblin <laughs> killing, apparently. Yeah. Then they look at Tedmund and I'm like, so what's your name? <laughs> um, Tedman. Tedman. Yeah. Tedman so from I where? Was... Um, I, I don't think I, I we actually have a name for the town I was in. Uh, no, no, I didn't give. I didn't um, set up a town name for that town. Do we can get a random town name? Just a second. Let me give some tokens. Let's get everyone on the map. There we go. All right, just to confirm, uh, you can all see your tokens. Yep. Yeah. Character looks way more badass than you than you described them. Yeah, that is interesting. We'll see. How about Honey Peak? How does that sound? Sure. Sure. There you go. I'm you from oh. Honey Peak. Why does your token not have a name attached to it? That's weird. Uh, because I didn't set oh. up his token. Show I name. set up the other one. Show nameplate. There we go. Yeah. That's what was missing. <laughs> All right. So, and just to confirm, everyone can see everyone else's health bars? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. And all of you who have dark vision should already have that set up. <clears throat> so we should be good to go. It's right. set, but I don't think it's... Okay, it's not nighttime yet, so that's why it's bright. I'm yes, assuming. no, no. It, yeah. it is still plenty daytime by the time you reach the... By the time you reach where you're going to. Let me go ahead and get up the... There we go. All right. So, so you're hiking for a while, uh, mostly making your way down the road before you cut off into the hillside. Um, mm -hmm. From where you are currently, you can see um, a dark rectangular hole. You can see, well, I guess I got just got a description here. A dark rectangular hole gapes amid the grass and vines of a nearby hillside. A stone, a stone door can be seen ajar in the tunnel's dim depths. The door bears chiseled marks that might have once been a name. So there's like an entrance? Yep. Yep, there's a big stone door set into the hillside. Uh, you currently are, you're basically like seeing this from like a little ways away at this point. Mm. Looks like cave. Looks and like door. Yeah. <clears throat> I like look at the orc and then the fighter human. I'm like, and any of you guys open this door? So you, you, guys, uh, can, you guys are open. just you guys are just gonna walk up to the door then? All right. Sure. <laughs> sure. Wait, was the door closed? Let's go make some money. It is currently ajar. It is open. Oh, it is open. It's it's like there's like a tight there's like a small crack where it's been like pushed open a little bit, but it's oh, not okay, so it's open not completely yet. open. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll make some money, boys. Boys, you you look like young one here. <laughs> I'm gonna like tap the uh, half part of the toes. Like you, you do look young. How how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you're paranoid after um, uh, <laughs> I can't remember his name off the top of my head now uh, Punier? Punier Punier yeah you're paranoid after Punier now huh as he oh. says that uh, as he says that Barjok will turn back and say like well you know you know half orcs technically age faster than humans right so technically I'm, I'm pretty old <laughs> what like a dog <laughs> I was literally like, <laughs> like out of. Wait, wait, he'll say, he'll are, say, are uh, like dog years. Well, more or less, but you know how humans die around the age of eighty. I'd probably die around the age of like sixty. Yeah, but probably because someone kills you. 
<laughs> okay, but now, now <laughs> I'm sorry, Jake, but now I'm just imagining Valak as just like, just, just like this, this like crouched over old man now, <laughs> just, just crotchety old man. <laughs> oh man! All right. Bar Barjok will say, "Well, if no one can, if no one kills me, hopefully I'll live longer." Amusing I thought. Can't guarantee anything. It, it's it, it's yeah, like right. it's like how kobolds can live to like 150, but most die at like 12. <laughs> 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 it's true. That that's like true in the lore. It's yep. it's awesome. Yep. Uh, yeah. Well, anyways, ghost awaits. All right. I think we established that they were goblins, but sure, we'll eh, go make some money. Goblins. It's one or the other. Something bad awaits. All right, yeah, so I guess... And uh, Tedman go first, then. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll gladly go first. <clears throat> I, think, I think it's Mike, uh, I think he said Barjok and Tedman go first. No, he said he said he's gonna let Tedman go first. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I said Tim Barjok and Tedman go first. Yeah. Oh, you okay. did? Okay. Yeah. I thought I thought you just uh, I heard you just say let Tedman go first. No, yeah, like, I heard right. let. God damn shit. <laughs> uh, it was uh, I heard Anne. Okay. Okay. Talk, so, yeah, he <laughs> that makes more sense. Yeah, I, as much crap as I give him for his accent, apparently I understand him better than the rest of you. <laughs> to be fair, that was a technical issue. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, you approach the, um... Your Bar -Jock, Bar -Jock goes forward, his shield and his axe go. Alright, so yeah, you approach, and like I described, there is a stone door set into the hillside, slightly ajar. You guys want a room? <laughs> You not getting any of my jokes here? No, I, I got the it. Monkeys are on the same space. Are they? Yes. Or my D or my oh. roll twenty. Froze. Oh, on roll twenty. Yeah, they are. <laughs> there we go. I oh, wasn't okay. okay. <laughs> Shift oh, 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 space oh. to the right. On my screen, I was I was to the right of uh, Ted. Yeah, and I was to the left. On my screen. <laughs> All right. So we're, we're exactly we opened there. the goddamn door. DM, okay. where is this uh, cave on this map here? Uh, this cave does. This one doesn't have a map, unfortunately. Yeah, but you can draw. There's a drawing tool. All right, all right, all right. I'll draw you. I'll draw you a hallway. Let's see. What were the dimensions on this then? <clears throat> or you know at the very least you could say it's to the north or up yeah or we'll, right. we'll say it's, just describe it yeah it's, it's up south. um <laughs> all right so you push open the door um uh it opens inward um and you hear a metal clattering from inside uh pushing the door oh, open yeah. pushing and the door up. open more you see um, an assortment of like uh, metal wagon wheel fittings and pots oh. and other stuff that seem to have been precariously stacked that you just knocked over with the door. Not totally Jeez. correct. I'm gonna I'm gonna like tap Amos on the shoulder and point to them like, yeah, that's a trip. <laughs> <laughs> I just shrug and I'm like, well, at least the fun will come over. Right. <laughs> We're not the one trapped in it. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna, um, yell out, uh, in Goblin, anybody home? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> you oh. speak Goblin? That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um. Yeah, Freaking called it. <laughs> you called it? Uh, roll me a perception check, if you okay. don't mind. First roll of the game. Oof. First roll of the game, 11. finally. 11. Ooh. Um, okay, no. You, you kind of call out, but you don't hear anything back. <laughs> okay. Er, yeah, yeah. We'll say you don't hear anything back. Um, so, yeah. I'll say that, Nick. I didn't, call, I didn't call it, but you definitely called that there were going to be goblins if you took 
goblin and <laughs> no that was sure. that was awesome um all right well yeah so inside the door is a passageway it is 10 feet high by 10 feet wide running straight into the hill 30 feet later it opens out into a square room 30 feet by 30 feet uh, in the center of the room is a stone block table. Uh, stains and marking atop the slab suggest the rusted objects that rusted objects were once arrayed on it. In the middle of the wall to the right is an entry passage that is closed and has a severely rusted iron door. So, enter the cave. I will ask. Do I see any signs of I don't know life around in the in the in this room? In this room? Like I mean, you, any signs of activity or something? Um. Recent-ish. It looks. Give me a perception check. Damn it. Or actually, no. An investigation would be better. Better. There we go. <laughs> Fifteen. Fifteen. All right. See here. Mm. All right, since you want a map, here's... Oh, my drawing on the GM layer still. Dang it. Yeah, dang it. <laughs> just like digital art all over again. Just wrong layer. Layer. Map layer. There we go. Oh, someone oh. else beat me to it. There you go. All right, so there's there's your room, and there appears to be, uh, there appears to be a door here, it's very rusted, and then here's oh, the okay. hallway you came in. Oh, okay. There's a wood or there's a stone table back here that seems to be all kinds of, like it seems like there's rust marks all over. All right, Barjak, now now that you are have been startled by the trap you are on high alert and looking around the room yeah, how dark is this more like the more that like the alarm trap just be like uh hold on i mean you're 30 feet into a hill it's pretty dark in here but can the human see <laughs> i don't know can he well the thing is humans don't have dark vision but this particular human does have that yay <laughs> all right so yeah so... You, uh you uh barjak you walk in you look around and uh you'd expect a place like this to be pretty dusty uh just from like lack of anyone or anything coming in here there does appear to be some uh tracks around um Let's see with a fifteen. Yeah, there there appears to be some tracks around, but not a lot. Like it just seems like someone kind of like, you know, a couple of people would like walk in and then walk back out. Uh, and it doesn't look like the, it doesn't look like this door has moved at all. Hey 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 there everyone, I got disconnected just as you were saying like. You, there you do see some cracks uh, uh, and then I cut out ah uh, dang it okay um yeah you see some tracks but not a lot it seems like some people like you know, possibly those kids walked in and then headed out hey and... uh someone tell Julian to get off the call because he's screwing up the uh... oh it, it's it's already gone don't worry okay um anyways uh it so weirdly enough though it doesn't seem like this door has moved at all like there doesn't seem to be any like marks on the floor where that door it seems to be very rusted shut so Valk's gonna lean into the room he's like hey orc where are bad guys <laughs> you said go baker says goblins I see neither He'll turn back and he'll say, well, the only tracks I see are, are the ones left by probably the kids. And if there were <laughs> goblins in here, they didn't leave any tracks. So 
Sounds like I guess door. let's try the door. Where? I'm gonna look for any clues to like anything magical or whatever. Okay. Symbols or whatnot. See if I find anything of interest. Um. Okay. Well, let's see here. Tomb inner passage. Um. So you, you begin looking around, uh, looking for any kind of other markings or anything like that. Uh, Barjak, when you touch the door, um, door. You, you reach out to touch it, and walking through the doorway, you see a ghostly armored male human wielding a long, or a spectral long sword just walk through the door. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Well, you there's our source see, of fun. <laughs> oh, see someone walk there or someone walk here? Uh, walk there, and I'll go ahead and boop. Oh, boy. Fuck. Oh, why does it have a name on it? That's not right. We don't, we don't see, a, see name. a name. Oh, you don't see the name? Okay, good. I was just like, uh-oh, spoilers. Not a goblin. Not a goblin. <laughs> um, let me see here. Roll initiative. Um... Well, he, he walks out, uh, and he, he says to you, um, Intruders, this is my master's tomb, and I am here to guard it. I request that you leave immediately. I, like, look at the others, and then I, like, look at the ghost, and I'm like, Are you haunting the townspeople? That's why we came here. <laughs> Shut up, Rudolph. It does not say lich. <laughs> <laughs> Even <laughs> better. <laughs> I don't think liches actually walk through walls, and they don't. No, no, they're a little like, too, hey, they're a little too corporeal for that. They're like, they're like, hey, look, souls for me. Nom um, nom nom. Yes, <laughs> no, you would be long dead if there was a lich in here. Um, I have. Uh, he turns to you and says, um, I have not been haunting the town. I have remained here. Uh, this is my this is my station, and I shall guard it. Uh, and I shall continue to guard it. Now I once once again ask you all to leave. Wait, before we leave, though, goblins, we've heard goblins, like, you know, wandering around. Any suspicious characters other than goblins, or where goblins went? Mm. Uh, he he sort of like he was reaching for his sword and then kind of pauses, like, okay, this is weird. Um, <laughs> but he, uh, let's see here. Um, uh, he says that. Uh, a goblin, or uh, I, there was a goblin in here. Uh, they left, um, they left immediately when requested, as should all of you. Who is your master? Um, uh, <laughs> um, I we'll really that. leave yeah. after this one question. Yeah, no. Uh, apologies. Uh, the DM does not have oh. this. Th this is not written down. Um, the, uh, my that, master has... Ghost is... I wonder if there's really a ghost there or, or if it's just an illusion. Uh, I mean, the... answering questions. So... The, the, uh... Very good illusion. Uh, the master of this tomb has been dead for a long time. I am, I am simply here to guard him. Uh, he, he gives you a name, but it is not, like, it's one you barely recognize, like, as a name. Like, it is, this tomb apparently has been here for a long time. Oh, yes. Well, I guess we'll Should trouble you no sense. longer, um... But, but one more question. Kids. Kids came in here in here, I think. Um 
and he 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 nods and said yes occasionally people have stopped by that but for the most part uh me appearing is simply enough to get them to leave you all are a strange lot <laughs> <laughs> i mean we were tasked to get rid of the ghost but you don't look like you've been hurting anyone so we don't want to trouble ourselves going into the effort of potentially dying in our attempts. The goblins we can go for. I appreciate You know the way <laughs> the goblins? That. Sorry, what was that? You know the way to the goblins? As I said, there was one in here, but they left uh, almost as fat. They did not see any, they apparently didn't see anything worth taking and then left. Well, Anything worth taking is probably behind that door. He kind of looks at you sharply and reaches for his sword again. I'm just saying <laughs> that's where it is. Not that I want it. Just that is probably where it is. That's all. We'll let you be. And they might kind of do like an usher motion to like Velik to like go out first. <laughs> okay. And then I like motion Tedmund and Barjok to go out. It's <laughs> kind of shrug, please. Dang, that's funny. Like the the, this is like one of the few missions that I did when I played this as a player. Can I make an insight had... check real quick? Insight check on who? Or like some kind of Arcana or something to see if it's if the thing is really there. <laughs> um, sure. I guess an insight check. It's not gonna go well, but oh, oh, yeah, no. Um, this definitely seems like a real ass ghost of some type. Um, All right. Someone who was basically cursed into guarding this tomb for the rest of their unlife, I suppose. <laughs> I wanna they're, as I yeah, usher afterlife. People. That's a good word for it. As I usher people out, I want to look for any symbols or anything that I recognize. Uh, there aren't any on the, um, uh, there, there were symbols on the door, but they all seem to have been, you saw them going in, but they seem to have been too faded to really tell what any of them mean. And there's like some on mm -hmm. the walls. Like but nothing po that I would possibly like they used to be names, but they have been long faded. I'm pretty sure I know what you're looking for, and no, no, you don't okay. see you don't see well, that symbol anywhere. Oh, well, okay. I head out, and then I make like a peace motion as we head out. <laughs> okay. Well, you all are making your way out. Um, and let me just go ahead and grab something real quick. Uh, yeah, as I'm leaving, I kind of want to keep an eye out for anything outside. Um, so yeah, as, as you ap approach the doorway, um, you see, um, if I can lay here. You see a goblin standing outside the doorway, uh, and she's uh, she kind of like um, points a weapon at you. Um, Big buddy, and uh, she uh, she says um, uh, to you, uh, hand. She she basically like says to hand over whatever you got, and this doesn't have to get messy. I look at the goblin and I'll say, or you run away as fast as you can, and maybe you live. Okay, so that's how it's gonna be, huh? Um, and she kind of like, uh. And uh, yeah, she she gets ready to attack. Let's roll some initiative, everybody. Ooh! Yeah. With one goblin. One goblin. Yeah. 
There's got to be more. <laughs> if I can get the character. Oh. Oof. It's fine. It's better if I go later. If I can find the character. Oh please, no. Please. What is? Okay. Okay. Creatures and monsters. There we go. I'm sure we got this. It's only one goblet. <laughs> Do not jinx it. <laughs> what is the fun in not testing our luck? All right, and get that. Every fight is test of luck. Don't need more test. Bad. <laughs> Thanks, Rudolph, for that vote of confidence. Why would what did Rudolph say? That five GP says the goblin wins. <laughs> <laughs> of course, ooh, ooh, the goblin did not. When we survive, I will be expecting that five gold pieces in the mail <laughs> in like a couple of days, overnighted to me. Okay. Oh dang! Oh man, that goblin did not roll well on initiative. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, Vince, what's your uh, what's your dexterity modifier? So yeah, you go first. I'll go first. Okay. Um, let's see. What does this one do? Ooh, that's a nice one. I'm gonna do this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and no, I'm that's a... create it in that square right there. Uh, <laughs> All right, you're gonna create a bonfire underneath the goblin. <laughs> I'm gonna create a bonfire with the goblin. <laughs> All right, Dex saving throw or take one d eight fire damage. Oh, that was horrible. All right, Dex saving throw. Ooh, she just barely makes it. Oh, that's garbage. That oh wait. Totally garbage. Oh shoot, it's whispering. Why is it whispering? Because you Ah, freaking yeah. freaking pre-made tokens. That's good to know. Yeah. I'll have to go ahead and change that. Never, All of them are gonna be like that. Just never whisper rolls. And also you never whisper rolls. I would rolls. suggest toggle. Just in case you ever have a case, you know, situation where you want to do like a secret stealth roll or a secret insight roll or something like that. Fair enough. If you want, so you definitely want to toggle, have the toggle on. All right, I'll I'll make sure to do that for all the characters in the future. All right, so that's your turn, Barjak. Anyways, there's still a fire there. By yes, the, way. the fire is still going. Uh, so, the thing is, I'm pretty sure she's not alone. But, I can't see anyone at the moment. Uh, nope, you're still standing so, in the doorway. Yeah, I know, I know. All right. So Fire. my question is, did I, <laughs> I knock her out without killing her? Without killing her, it's, it's, is it an it? Is it an e or an or her? He or a her? It's a goblin. Who can tell? <laughs> it is a her. <laughs> but yes, you can okay. you can attempt to make a non lethal attack. I think I'll walk over. I'll walk over, brandish my battle axe, and uh, and uh, just like. Swing with the flat of the blade, I guess. All right. So here it goes. I'm pretty sure 19 <laughs> hits. Oh, uh, yeah, 19 hits. <laughs> it's a goblin. <laughs> uh, 11. What the bludgeoning? I'm going to have to change that. Uh, well, I mean, in but this yeah. case, technically, it's correct. Oh, uh, well, yeah, sure. <laughs> but... I'm sure eleven does it. Oh yeah, no. Uh, you you swing and um, <laughs> she she, uh, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll just give her the unconscious marker instead. Um, she she kind of just goes flying off to the side. 
Um, 15 feet. Damn, that hit pretty hard. Or, well, yeah, just over here, I guess. <laughs> um, Amos, uh, your turn. Uh, remember, the name's Amos, but... Amos, my bad. <laughs> I'm gonna... I'm, I'm trying. I'm sorry. Every... Um, Amos. This is gonna happen. Amos. Amos. I have it written down in front of me. It's just... <laughs> Amos. Um... I'm gonna... I was practicing the wrong name this whole time. And that's really messing me up. I'm gonna move out here to inspect the goblin. Alright. Um... Considering the fight's not over, apparently. Um, you want to look around? Sure. If I turn around, do I see anything? Uh, yeah. Um, b uh, both of you see this, and Barjok, you heard it as soon as you hit the goblin. Um, this is the hill, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, on the hit, like on the hill above you. Uh, you you see this guy. <laughs> oh frick! I used up all my movement. God uh, damn it! <laughs> that, uh, you're not entirely sure. Uh, he looks sort of like an ogre. Well, uh, I don't see him. I'm nope. I'm like you're still in the tunnel. <laughs> uh, but I'm he like kinda, he kind of go he kind of makes a noise like ah like oh no she went down. <laughs> Shit. And I look over at Barjok and I'm like, well, the fun's really here now. And then, oh man. You're the one that's calling it fun. <laughs> <laughs> Says the monster hunter. <laughs> um. What's the plan, Amos? I'm gonna keep saying your name so I can like remember it better. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. <laughs> um. Uh I am gonna try something. Um. Um. <laughs> oh. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to. it not work yeah i'm gonna cast this this net whispers oh boy uh, the og ogre and okay. see how so it has to make a wisdom saving throw wisdom saving. on a failed save it takes 3d6 psychic, psychic damage okay. and must immediately use its reaction okay let's see here <laughs> I'm assuming that's below your DC. Yeah, so, uh... <laughs> 14 psychic damage. And, um... It must, on its turn... Um, no, as its reaction, move as far as its speed allows away from me. <laughs> okay, so you see it looking worried at the goblin on the ground, and then it kind of, like, freezes up and just... Like, yeah. I start playing my flute, and that's what it's hearing. Ooh, nice. And, and the others don't hear my flute playing. It's only that over. Yeah, he hears the uh, discordant tones of your flute just like strike him, and he immediately like his eyes go wide, and he, uh, what's his movement speed? Thirty feet. All right, he just like starts book assing that way. <laughs> And yep. Yep, that's my turn. All right. It's the goblin's turn. Um <laughs> So that was his reaction to move that far away. Does he still have his movement or is he just stuck here now? <laughs> um is, if available to move as far away. I think he still has his movement. Yeah, it, it, it was just its reaction. So. Okay, so yeah, he just used his reaction. Uh, yeah, he kind of like runs and then he stops and you just kind of hear him go, wait, 
and just go, what? Wait, hold on. <laughs> and, uh, wait, what? Yeah, wait, what? <laughs> um, and he begins, uh, let's see here. Uh, you, you hear him call out, wait, Morgra, and begins rushing back. Uh, he, he makes it <laughs> full movement speed, makes it to here, and he kind of like uh, fumbles with his axe, realizes he can't quite reach any of you, and just pulls out a javelin. <laughs> oh, frick! <laughs> uh, it, he's going to throw... Barjok, you're the one that took down his friend there, so he's going to throw at you. Sure. Uh, sure. Javelin ranged. Ooh. Oh, God. Ooh. Ouch. Wow. Dang. Six points. <laughs> That's yeah, almost. Use. That nearly would have killed you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to level Ooh. one, everybody. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's actually garbage damage, too, because he rolled like a yeah. one. <laughs> he definitely could have taken me down with that attack. Oh, yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, that's their turn. Tedmund, you hear um, clanging from outside the hall. <laughs> so, it's the familiar sounds of battle! Battle! <laughs> so, Tedmund takes out his short swords and just runs out. Um, uh, I don't even know. I'm guessing I don't see him. Really? Uh, yeah, you can see the... Well, you see the spear impale Barjok, so uh, yeah, <laughs> you can turn and see the half-ogre standing there. Um, so I can't really do anything, so I'll just ready an attack in case and... something comes close. All right, fair enough. Uh, Barjok, it is once again your turn. Uh, well, I am currently now impaled. <laughs> oh, look at that. I've been impaled. <laughs> Uh, so... There's an arrow in your butt! Oh, would you like <laughs> Ironic, seeing as it's the half-ogre that hit you instead. Jeez. <laughs> Alright, so, uh... Fair play, you son of a bitch! <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, with that going on... I'm not sure if Barjok wants to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that thing. But... Go, oh, I'll heal you. <clears throat> Alright, yeah, I think I'll go forward then. Barjok will, I guess, leave the javelin where it's, in, where it's at, and then, like, hobble its way over. <laughs> And then try to strike the ogre with his uh, battle axe. All right. -handed. Go ahead and take a swing. That'll hit. He's he's just wearing like a leather vest, pretty much. All right. He takes nine points of slashing damage. All right. And uh, after that, he'll just say, "Oh yeah, it's real fun." <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it exhilarating? All right. If, sure is. If that's your turn, welcome. All right, Velik, what's up? Uh, I will. <laughs> you poke your head outside, and you see this thing slobbering above you. <laughs> yep, I'm going to take the, uh, basically, I'm going to recast my creative bonfire. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say with the elevation difference, you can scoot out without a uh, opportunity attack. Right, I figured because I wasn't actually next to him because there's like you know the hillside between yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so it's a it's a lovely cantrip. It's mm -hmm. also concentration, so my old bonfire dies. Yep. As I spark a new bonfire <laughs> underneath them, like right there. Yep. And boom! Oh my god! Uh... Oh. Welcome to being a low-level caster. All right, deck save. Yeah. Nothing to do with low-level caster. Everything to do with the dice hate me. Well, <laughs> he failed. He failed his deck save. Well, at least it's, damage is damage. His foot, his toesies are crispy now. <laughs> he feels it. He feels it. Oh, yeah. That's okay, because if he doesn't move, he's going to feel it again. Yep. All right. Um, Amos. 
Um, with my bonus action, I'll cast Healing Word. Hell yeah. Uh, so, you take <laughs> five points oh, yes. of healing. Sorry, sorry, I could have given you max healing, but... Yeah, and then... I mean, it's, pre it's still pretty good. Yeah, no, yeah. at level one, five health is a lot. <laughs> yeah, and thus, my action... Because... It's just mockery. No, yeah, you can. That's a level one spell and a cantrip. Yep, you can do both those yeah. at once. All right. Feeling word is a so lovely fair. bonus action for bards, which is nice. All right, what so. what do you say to him? Um, I would like to think that my flute playing once again just kind of <laughs> completely pierces his soul. So he has to make another right, wisdom saving enough. throw. Wisdom saving throw. Oh, it just makes it. Oh, just barely makes it. Yeah. Um. Let's see, it must succeed on it or take. That sucks because he did max damage too. Yeah, Would've... I know, right? Would have done. All right. Yeah, that's fine. It is now his turn again. Oh wait, I would like to oh. move away. Oh, <laughs> good choice. <laughs> Get right there, far enough. Uh. The... This guy seems, like, panicked and injured. He's going to, uh, let's see here. Okay. He's going to, uh, kind of push Barjak and use his action to disengage. He's going to rush around, scoop up the goblin. Or well, now he's going to scoop up the goblin, kind of backhand Barjak. And attempt to disengage. Tedmund, your turn. Okay, well, I'm gonna charge straight towards him. Still kinda bad now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to and... be fair, they are bandits, like... Yeah. Eh? Yeah, but I mean, still... It's not a, it's not a mindless monster, it's running away. Shit. <laughs> D &D you want to get your con. money, Barjok, or not? <laughs> They've been They're terrorizing right. people around here. To be fair, to be fair, if, most if of the money was. Away, in. They'll rob someone else and probably kill and eat them too. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. So Tim. um, I'll um, poke him with my short swords. <laughs> you pokey poke. Uh, one of those Oof. hits. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, how do you get two attacks at level one? I got two swords. Garb, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, the wrong, Jake. yeah five it damage. means everything. The first one hits. <clears throat> so, five piercing damage. Uh, <laughs> he is. He <laughs> stumbled. No, that's why he failed the second one. He stumbles, <laughs> and he is like barely standing at this point. Uh, Barjak, right. you're up. Well, you know, I really feel con I feel conflicted at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I feel conflicted about this, he says, taking off the half work or half ogre's head. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me an attack then. Yeah, Bar Barjak will be, will. Uh... <laughs> I don't think he's saying anything, but he'll just like he'll he'll feel it and then he yeah, he'll try and hit it. Yep. Yeah, that hits. Hit. And oh my god. <laughs> uh just to let you know, he had one hit point left. <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah, you just you dig into him and this uh giant or this giant just like collapses to the ground. So the thing, the thing with Barjog that I'm realizing is that with Punier, I had a whole freaking personality locked, locked, uh, uh -huh. on lock with Punier, right? Yep. But with this one, I'm just like, you, you don't. Who am I playing him? Yeah, you don't quite have the character's voice yet. Yeah, no, I got, I get, I get that feeling. Like I, I've definitely even had like characters I've played for 
several sessions and I still don't have a voice for him. So I, I understand that. <laughs> All right, but yeah, that's your turn. Yep. Uh, what what now? Is, is someone going to coup de gras the goblin and loot the bodies? I mean... I'm not sure why Barjok did non-lethal damage to begin with. We could, okay. So we could ask him questions, of course. Okay, well then don't kill the goblin. It's up to you. I think Barjok's right. We, we can still loot the goblin, though. True. Okay. Yeah, see if there's anything worthwhile. What ill-gotten gains do they have on them? That's a good question. Um... Let's see here. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba, that's the treasure for there. <laughs> All right, time to make something up. I wonder if they have a. I actually wonder if they have a camp, where they're holding their uh, well, their loot, and if there's like more of them. Actually, um, that is. Uh, not entirely incorrect. Um, if you look around, uh, or looking around a little bit, uh, there is a, um, a basically just like a pile of rocks nearby, uh, and hidden behind, or like 150 feet away, uh, and behind one of the boulders there, you find a small encampment. Uh, it seems to have just been these two. Um, doesn't seem like they've been very successful yet. Uh, across all of their, across all of their stuff, you maybe find like five gold. Uh, you suspect that they're, you know, combination robbing people and also probably tried to get whatever treasure is inside the tomb, but were scared off by the ghost. Great. So Barjok will take the five gold because he's broke. <laughs> Equity before equality, I say. <laughs> I will remind you that out of character, that was your choice. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> You're the one that decided to spend all of your money on a shield. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> But, uh, all right, so. All right, what's the plan, then? At this point, have we looted the, the goblin the goblin and the ogre and the ogre yet? Yeah. All right, so the five gold is everything we found? Yeah, pretty much. All right, so. What, whatever whatever treasure is supposed to be here is probably, like, uh, like Velik suggested, behind that ghost. All right, so uh, in this case... Barjok will uh, go up to the rest of the group and ask them. So, we found out that the goblins and that the goblin and the uh, the big one were the one that were you know, were the ones that were actually dangerous. We know that the ghost isn't going anywhere, and we know that it's not likely to terrorize the people of the town. But we also know that there is treasure in the, in his tomb. So, uh, I guess yes. my question is: Are we going? Are we going in and try to loot the place, or should we leave it be? Uh, yes. Well, the, the grand they can't later. do it tonight because uh, I you... used my last bell slot killing oh, you. For the love of Tear Orc, just how broke are you? Well, right now. I can yeah, I can last for a few days. Ugh. But but, but you're adventurers nice. and there's loot. <laughs> yeah. It would be it would be nice to uh find out whatever's in whatever's in that tomb and uh neutral good be more comfortable. Yeah, I don't want to loot the tomb. I mean I'd love to loot it, but I don't have the ability to do so right now. If this was dangerous ghost, yes. Ghost is just stay away. So if people stay away, not dangerous. 
if people well, that's what I thought too. try to force themselves in, then it will be dangerous ghost. But then it will be fault of the people, not the ghost. Because ghost tells them, go away. <laughs> <laughs> they have opportunity to leave. Like, you see, you freaking Jake has it. Jake is the freaking Jake's the best character in this group yet. <laughs> Just because of his voice. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is great. All, right. all I've got all I've got really right now is the accent. I haven't nailed down a personality yet. Oh no, that's fair. That's fair. I don't expect any of you to have a personality yet. Right, so like this is this still session part, one. I mean, Sybil seems to have a pretty good grasp of Yeah. Sybil wrote a lot of yeah. backstory. <laughs> oh, I went so complex. It's you so wouldn't good. even know. It's so good. <laughs> I have an idea. Oh yeah, because you read it, you cheater. <laughs> <laughs> it's really right, so... fun to do. <laughs> uh, no, I so probably would have done Bar the same Jock, thing. <laughs> I guess Barjuk will just say, "Well, I mean, then it's settled. Go back to Red Larch and try and find another another job, I guess." All right. I'd say yeah. Compared to uh, what Civil War, my character's backstory is kind of boring and pathetic. Uh, Are you talking about my backstory? No, I'm talking about my character's backstory compared to Civil's character's backstory. <laughs> yeah. All right. All I, right. I mean, you at you at least had well, a, an interesting one. Given what Sybil wrote, I'm pretty sure most of our characters have boring and pathetic backstories. <laughs> Probably, yeah. No, just no, like no. I, I will say, Amos or Amos, getting it. Amos has the most motivation, I suppose. <laughs> Probably the most intricate. I would say the most intricate backstory. Although, although I will say, for the plot hooks that I gave you guys, I'm probably the most proud of Tedman's. Just for writing alone, Ooh. that one was dope. <laughs> <laughs> Although Barjax, I while writing it, I broke the Discord character limit by like four hundred. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, yeah. It was like oh yeah, this is what happens. Yeah, because <laughs> I I just use the Xanathar's guide for creating my backstory, <laughs> and it was pretty simple. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I was like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Quick question. It is just turned 10 o'clock. Um, I know that's about the time we usually try to start wrapping up. I know it took us a while to get going. Do you, do we, does everyone want to keep playing or do we want to call it for tonight? I think uh, it's I a good place for if... me to go. I kind of figured, yeah. Because yeah. it's dinner time. Got it. Yeah, if Sybil's got to go, we should probably call it a night. All right, we'll call it a night then. And next time. Oh, guys. How would you guys feel about maybe starting just a little bit earlier? I'm fine with that. I'm only thinking like a half hour earlier. Start at seven. Yeah, that's seven. fine. Yeah. Start at, so we'll do this at seven, like seven to ten, pretty much. So you mean seven thirty instead of eight? <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully yeah, next. That means that, that means that we actually have to like try get you know try to start at seven if we yeah. want to start. Oh, well, well, now mm -hmm. that I know what I'm doing with the recording software and everything is set up this time properly and I don't have to tweak things, you know, as long as OBS is working correctly and keeps my settings, um, yeah, uh, hopefully we'll be starting more on time that time or next, next in two weeks. Uh, do we also want to move to seven for every game? Do we want to start at Plan Readers at uh, seven no, as well? I'm just talking about this game. I don't think we need to. To, to alter anything for the other game. Okay, so plane raiders. Do we want to keep that at seven thirty, or do we want to move that? Yeah. Keep that at seven thirty. Okay. Saturdays at seven thirty, and we can do this one Fridays at seven. Okay. Uh. So yeah. Sure. Okay. Cool. All Sounds right. good. So and for so the our next game will be on my birthday. Ooh. Aww. I will be old. Barjak. You, you you know what that means. It's time to kill off his character. <laughs> it sure is. Um, uh, too bad he's already you got... Are, you guys are in the big dungeon, too. Yeah, too bad he's already gotten his relic, though. Like, Yeah. That would have been fun. That would have been neat to give him his cool relic. But anyways... Uh, <clears throat> well, okay. So, 
people who are in chat, uh, Keegan and um, Rudolph, and anyone thank else who's here. Uh, thank you so so much for stopping by and watching our uh, dumb D and D game <laughs> that we've been doing. Uh, Spread the word. Yes, if you if you drag can... other people to come watch it, mm -hmm. kicking and screaming against <laughs> yep. their will. We don't care. <laughs> yeah. <Take anyone. laughs> watch uh but yeah thank you for stopping by this has been the very first session of our uh princes of the apocalypse game that we're starting hopefully this one will be going for it a while a, it was a slow yeah. one it You'll was make a slow like one but we're gonna pick up the pace i have to do a chair and then like tape their eyelids open <laughs> all right all right Valak. um <laughs> but yeah no um i know this one was a little slow hopefully we'll be the next one will be faster we will well, probably you know, most campaigns they start out a little yeah slow. no Next time we'll probably have like a proper dungeon map and everything, depending on where they go. Um, but yeah, thank you again to everyone who stopped by. Like we said earlier, next week, uh, we, we do an every other week schedule. Next week on Saturday at 7.30, we will be streaming Plane Raiders, where we play the worst Githyanki out to steal everyone's things. Oh, you guys are far from the worst. Oh yeah, no, we're not the worst, but we're definitely like the worst adventurers. Um... <laughs> But yeah, some horrible Githyanki out to steal everyone's things. And then the week after that, Friday at 7, we will be back for more um, Princes of the Apocalypse. Which, uh, in case you didn't hear us, at, or in case you didn't catch us mention this at the start, we are actually, because this is the start of a new campaign, we're going to actually try recording this. So uh, maybe by next week we'll have a YouTube channel up and running so you can go check out our VODs there. Um, yeah, I think that's about everything we've got. Um, again, thank you for stopping by and, uh, have an awesome weekend, everybody. Bye. So long. Hope to see you next time. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.